so here we are at Hajir Kim. Mm -hmm. There's the visitor center to the right. And it's got a little 4D movie that you watch. It's about five, ten minutes long. It tells you the history of this place. And then you physically walk to the site where we're walking to now. So here we are at the ancient site of Hajir Kim. So at one point, this building, more than likely even the surrounding buildings, had roofs. The thing is, uh, some kind of cataclysmic uh, weather and you know, earthquakes and stuff destroyed them. And then time and weathering put everything off to the side. Uh, I believe some of this is reconstructed. Um, and then this awning was put to protect it from the elements. These are megalithic blocks that are made of sandstone and limestone. These cutout windows are interesting because you almost think that they are doorways and passages to other rooms, but if reconstructed incorrectly, they could actually be part of some kind of a solar alignment if they were in fact put in the wrong place. We've seen these type of hole cutouts before in Egypt. Usually it's because someone in the olden times drilled or cut holes through it to like tie off ropes for horses or camels. Don't know if that's the same purpose here. So this room probably had a roof. I think they assume that this room in fact had a roof, but it's now missing and gone. These two circular cutouts here, the same that we've seen in other places, including at Gobustan in Baku, Azerbaijan, where I was just recently. The question is if they're ceremonial or some other purpose, but more than likely they collected water at some point, and then what they did with you know that afterwards is a mystery. stuff is weathered and cracked. This has been rebuilt. So, you know, who knows if it really So next to the doorway here, we have probably some of the largest stones we've seen in this whole area. Um, they're really quite large. I just have to wonder how exactly several people were able to tilt it, you know, prop something up against it and then stand it upright. This is quite a complicated work. Granted, the disfigurement and the uh, erosion, you know, shouldn't with you know take away 
from the precision that it probably was, you know, put together with when it was first up, when it was in its heyday. So here we are at the ancient site of Majendra. I might not be saying it right. Uh, it is located just a little bit of ways away from Hadrakim, which is up there. And this is Majendra. So we're going to go explore and see what it's all about. So we're entering one of the chambers now. Again, I assume this has been reconstructed. These here are probably modern. You can tell they look really different. It's probably just as a support. You can see that's already been patched up over there. Look at these interesting holes, these little drill holes, the drill marks. I read a theory that the explanation for all these was like a counting system for something to do with stars and celestial bodies um i'm not entirely sure but we'll see so as you just saw right there parts of this are in fact reconstructed not necessarily together in the original configuration. You can see there's some sort of a structure up there which looks like a closed off house. We're now entering what you can call a second story. You have this circular room here. Again, this temple has largely been reconstructed, so we don't know, reconstructed, so we don't know that this is the original look, or function, or form. It is still pretty awesome nonetheless. So you can see that Majandra Temple sits so close to the water. You can see just how close it is. It's within a few, you know, ten meters or so, and then you hit the cliff and you're out into the ocean. Uh, that is an island that is now a nature reserve. Uh, apparently there was a monastery on it at some point, um, but I think there's nothing there now. Uh, we're walking down the paths, a little bit away from the temples. These are nature paths, nature preserves. Mm, yeah, nature trails. I don't have a lot of time. We're going to try, try to see what's close and around. If not, I'm going to have to hook back up. So, we will see what else we can find. So you can see there was a small chapel dedicated to the Assumption of Our Lady that was built in a small cave in, on Filfo, which is that island there. In the year 1343, the cave was destroyed in 1856 following an earthquake. And then, of course, 
it was used as bombing practice uh, bombing target practice by British and the NATO forces which remained uh, destroyed any traces of it which I think is so sad well, I don't know anything about it I'm not even sure if you can go 